I'm Jaren Pantilla. I'm a senior data software engineer at Genentech. And today I'm going to talk about some of our recent work in enabling Bioconnect WordPress in Python. I'm sure everyone here is aware of Bioconnector. It is a successful open source project and community developing comprehensive software for managing and analyzing genomic data in the R programming language. It started in 2001 and has over 2300 software packages that enables the community to develop into end genomic workflows. There's many, many publications that show Bioconnector has a significant impact in genomics and open source bioinformatics software. If we take a step back and look at how things were when we started our efforts in Python, one of the strong backbones of Bioconnector is the standardized data structures they provide uh, to represent various genomic data. And one of the key principles is to always be backwards compatible. This enabled the community to build a number of methods for analysis and visualization. In the Python space, there are a number of different efforts trying to develop similar infrastructure and tools together, but these efforts are fragmented and not well integrated with each other. Things are very consistent in the single cell space, especially with the SCBOS ecosystem, and thanks to many of the folks who developed these packages. This is where we think BioCPy can help in facilitating some of the bioconnector workflows in Python. But as we build more genomic tools and software, something we wanted to focus on is one, most analysis and, and workflows, they say transition between R and Python. So we need to think of tools to facilitate the seamless transition and two, thinking of language agnostic ways to store genomic data. And we focused our efforts around these two specific use cases. And I think it's fair to say as analysts follow where the methods are. And this has historically been R and Bioconnector for statistical analysis, Python for imaging and machine learning workflows, and folks using exotic languages like Julia or even JavaScript for genomic analysis. Even though we switch different computation environments, the experimental data is the common currency. So if we focus only on our transition between R and Python, there's a couple of ways to make the data transition easier. Either we store the data in a language agnostic format or save objects as RDS files and try to access the serialized objects in Python. And let's say this all works, the key question is, do we have appropriate classes to represent genomic data in Python? And this is where we initially focused on our, our efforts. We implemented a number of genomic data structures that align with Bioconductor and they are interoperable with R with the strong support for interval-based operations like genomic ranges or range summers experiments. We'd not try to reinvent the wheel, but also use existing ecosystems in Python for representing dense or sparse matrices and data frames. In addition, we spent a lot of time thinking of usability as scientists transition between these two languages. For example, if you want to compute flanking regions, the R and the Python syntax, along with the parameters is almost the same, except you're switching from a functional programming paradigm to, a, to an object-oriented language. And as we mentioned before, there's a number of classes that provide bioconnector representations for storing genomic annotations and experimental data. We also developed additional packages to support delayed operations and matrix representations that are compatible with R, and we're expanding this to spatial and CRISPR modalities. Um, we also recently started to document a lot of the functionality that we provide through BioCPy. Uh, the original goal was to be able to reproduce the computational genomics in our book. And currently, our tutorial provides introduction to all data structures that we implemented, operations over these representations, and how to interop between R and Python using a couple of different approaches that we have implemented. Uh, the book itself uses Quarto for reproducibility, and all the snippets are reusable. And a case study where we think this is super helpful is in the single cell space. A recent biarchive paper from Leo Pactos lab highlights some of the differences in analysis of single cell data between SURAT and SCANPY. Even though they look like they have the same steps at the higher level, there are a lot of implementation details that result in a different interpretation of the results. For this particular scenario, Aaron has implemented many of the underlying methods from Scran and C++ that enables us to write bindings to the same implementations across different languages. We built an app called Kana that is also published last year that allows you to analyze single cell data in the browser without any backends uh, using the same uh, underlying C++ methods using a technology called WebAssembly. And now the same methods are available in Python uh, as well. These packages, this allows the BioCPy, this, this allows consistent and reproducible workflows across different computation environments. The packages are open source and are available on GitHub. We also have strong collaborations with Bagonator and Nathan's lab who provided a lot of the early feedback and helped make our tools better. If anyone is interested, we're also presenting a workshop on interoperability between R and Python 
uh, at Bioconductor in a couple of weeks. So feel free to check it out and also reach out if you're interested in contributing or have any questions. Thank you.